watched him before. Praise him. Praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Thank you, Father. Oh Lord, we bless your holy name. We give you glory, we give you honor. Thank you so, so much for being so good to us. Thank you for a new beginning, Lord. May your name forever be glorified. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. We want to pray especially for our sportsmen and women today. You see, when they succeed, they bring glory to their nation. When they fail, it affects the nation. So we want to pray that from now on, God will anoint all our sportsmen yeah. and sportswomen yeah. that they will no longer fail. Yeah. Go ahead, pray for them, pray for them. Pray. If they succeed, we succeed. If they fail, it affects us. Pray that God will anoint all our sports men, all our sports women. But from now on, they will never fail again. They will excel in all competitions. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor, Jesus. We give you. Ancient of days, the God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow, our supporter, our healer, our promoter, our provider, our all in all. Glory be to your holy name. Thank you for January. Thank you for February. Thank you for March, thank you for April, thank you for May, thank you for June, thank you for July, oh, thank you for August, 
And now, thank you for September. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, make this a September to remember. A September to remember for good. And we are committing all our sportsmen and sportswomen into your hands. If they succeed, we rejoice. And we need to be part and parcel of these people. That's why today we are praying specially for them. Because they represent us. Don't let them fail again. Anoint them for success. Wherever they go to compete, let them excel. Keep accident away from them. Keep sickness away from them. Keep the devil away from them. In all areas of their lives, let it be well with them. And let them know you. Let them serve you. Father, we are thanking you for all your children who have been faithful in the payment of their tithes and in the giving of their offerings. Almighty God, I pray that this month you will surprise them. You will bless them beyond measure. I pray, Lord God Almighty, for every one of your children the rest of this year let it be for better things. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Well, let someone shout hallelujah. Shake hands with two or three people and say happy new year. And then you may please be seated. Uh, just in case you are wondering, those of you who are new, where well, we say Happy New Year, the new year of the Redeemed Christian Church of God begins in September. And uh, I'm sure you know that our God is always getting better and better. He reserved the best to the last. The last convention was, was awesome. Um, I'm a man of crowds. I love crowds. When I see a crowd, I, I feel happy. But this last convention, I was afraid. When I saw the crowd, I was afraid. I don't mind confessing that to you. Particularly when I got to the children's section. They don't show them on most of the uh, screens. But when you stand, and you look to your right for almost a kilometer, and they are children. You turn to your left, almost a kilometer, they are children. Hundreds of thousands of them. Oh, I said, God, have mercy on me. Because if if somebody gives you a hundred children and he says, help me look after this hundred children for one week, mm -hmm. you know the implications. Children are supposed to be restless, they are supposed to be playful. They... And at the end of it, not a single one was missing.
Ah, my God is good. Yes, sir. And I want to assure you, better things are ahead. Yes. So our theme this morning is greater heights. The world is in levels, even physically. You have those who are in the hole, six feet under the ground. Then you have those who are on the ground, on the surface of the ground, but in a valley. Then you have those who are on a hill. Then you have those who are on a mountain. But there's something even higher than the mountain. We call it the sky. But when we talk about the sky, <laughs> there is the sky and there is the sky. The journey from here to the moon, traveling by the best rockets, we take you three days. The journey to the sun will take you a couple of years. And then beyond the sun, you have places like Mars and Jupiter, etc., etc., uh, that will take a little longer. And above it all, there is heaven. I will see you in heaven one day. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 40, from verse 28 to 31. Isaiah 40, 28 to 31. Has thou not known, has thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. The world, in every facet of it, is in levels. Politically, for example, we have those who are called party stalwarts, which is a polite name for thugs. Those people, they are lower than the lowest. Because when there is any confrontation between two politicians, the stalwarts will fight against one another. In the process, some get killed. And many a times, when the battle is fierce, they don't even wait for those who died. The rest will escape with the politician. And then there's a level higher than that when you become maybe a counselor. Uh, you won't be carrying axes and cutlasses about. And then you can move from there and become a governor. And then you can move from there and become the president. So there are levels. 
tem esportes. Uh, because I used to be a boxer, I don't look like one now. In boxing, there are levels. There is uh, that level where your opponent knocks you out so thoroughly, they carry you out of the ring. Many a times you wake up on your way to the hospital. Uh, that's one level. Uh, the second level, they knock you out all right, but you woke up before uh, you got out of the ring. That's another level. And then there's a level where you have lost three fights in a row. That's a level. Then, of course, there is that level where you are the champion. Um, particularly when you are winning again and again. And then there is that level where you retire undefeated. The undefeated champion. Levels. But wherever you may find yourself, God is always there. Even if you find yourself in a hole, underneath there, it will be there. In Daniel chapter 6, from verse 1 to the end, Daniel 6, 1 to the end, Daniel was in the den of lions. The den of lions is a special hole dug into the ground where lions are kept. But he went there and came out alive because Deuteronomy 33 verse 27, Deuteronomy 33 verse 27 says, underneath are the everlasting arms. No matter how low you go, his hands are still underneath you. So I have good news for those of you who might be underneath the earth. Because you came today, you will come out of the ground. Then, of course, there are those who are on the face of the earth, but they are in a valley. Um, the valley is representative of depression. As a matter of fact, that's what they call it in uh, scientific terms. And when someone is in serious depression, he might even be considering going underneath the earth. You have heard people say, I wish the ground would open up and swallow me. That's when they find themselves in some very serious embarrassments. In, in 1 Kings chapter 19, from verse 1 to 8, 1 Kings 19, 1 to 8, a great man, because he found himself in the valley, prayed to God and said, God, let me die. His name is uh, Elijah. But he didn't die because God was there. He was expecting to die, but God came and helped him. As a matter of fact, he sent help to him twice. For those of you who might be in a situation where you are beginning to think that maybe death is better than life, I have good news for you. As long as you are still breathing, there is hope. Yeah. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 4. Ecclesiastes 9 4. Whenever you are still breathing, there is hope. So don't let the devil deceive you that there is no hope for you. No matter your situation. As, the, as long as you are still breathing, 
in the name that's above every other name, you are going to shout for joy. Then there is those who are on the hilltop. As his things are already looking up, you are no longer on the ground. You have climbed. Ah, when you are on the hilltop, the beauty there is that particularly when you are in connection with God, the enemies will have to try to climb to reach you. That means you are above them. And uh, if we look at First Kings chapter 18, from verse 36 to 40, First Kings 18, 36 to 40, if you are on a hill and God is on your side, any enemy that is trying to climb to come and meet you there is going to be burnt by fire. <laughs> it's beautiful to be on a hilltop. That's why when you, are, when you hear some people who are fasting, <laughs> when you ask him to come and eat, he will say, I'm on a hill. He doesn't want to say I'm fasting. When you're on a hill, it becomes easier for God to answer your prayers. But then, there's something higher than the hill. That's called the mountain. Uh, when you read First Kings chapter 18 from verse 41 to 45, 1 Kings 18, 41 to 45, you find that Elijah was already on a hill on Mount Carmel. He had prayed and fire had fallen and all his enemies had been vanquished. But then he wanted something more. He wanted to pray so that rain will fall. The Bible said he climbed higher. He was already on a mountain. But even on a mountain, there are levels. So you can move a little higher than you are. And I'm praying for all of us who are here today. Before the end of this month, you'll be on a higher level. But then the text we read this morning told us that you can even fly above mountains. He said, those who will wait upon the Lord, they will increase their strength so that with wings they can fly above mountains. Uh, I've always told my children, one of the most beautiful things that can happen is for God not, not to bother to move the mountains blocking your way to take you above them uh, so that you are flying and you are just looking at uh, mountains below uh, and the first time I, I flew from Nigeria to Sierra Leone and uh, blessed Nigeria Airways of blessed memory it was during the afternoon and we were not too far up. But I could see all the hills, all the mountains. They look beautiful when you are looking at them from above. From this morning onward, you'll be flying above your mountain. But let's talk spiritually for a few minutes. A sinner is in a hole. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. Ephesians 2 verse 1 says that a sinner is dead in trespasses and sins. He may not be buried yet, but anyone who is living in sin is dead. 
thank God Jesus Christ is still there. No matter how long, no matter how long you've been dead, he has the ability to resurrect. I mean, when you read John chapter 11, by the time you read it from verse 1 to uh, 44, a fellow who had been dead for four days, the Almighty God still raised him up. There might be one or two of us who are still enjoying sin, who will lie and enjoy it and, and say, I, I set him up. There might be those who will say, uh, when he has committed adultery, I conquered another one. Etc. Etc. Rejoicing in what you call sadness, but there is someone who can still raise the dead. And I'm praying today that any sinner listening to me today, you will come out of the hole. And then higher than that are those who are saved. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Second Corinthians 5, 17. Tells us that if you are born again, you have a brand new beginning. Brand new beginning. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Salvation brings you to that level where you forget everything, all the rotten things you have done are washed away. And you have a brand new life. And you, you, many a times you can't even recognize yourself. Am I the one who used to do all those things? Am I the same person? You are out of the hole. And God has already put your feet on the rock to stay. And then there's something better than salvation. Something higher than salvation. And that is what is called sanctification. When you are saved, your sins are washed away. But it is sanctification that will help you not to sin again. It's like when you are working in a company. I don't know if they still do so, but when you do something wrong, they give you a query. You answer the query, both the problem and the answer to the query they put in your file. And in many companies, provided you don't have more than three queries in three years, at the end of the third year, they remove every query from your file to give you a new beginning. So your file will be clean as if you have not received a single query. But if after they have just wiped away, wiped clean your file, you begin to make mistakes again, then they begin to put fresh queries in your file. The ability never to have any other query in your file is given to you by what is called sanctification. Because when you become born again, the blood of Jesus cleanses from all sins. Every lie you have told, every person you have cheated, everything, as far as God is concerned, the day you got born again, the blood of Jesus wiped it away. And then you need sanctification to help you now to be able to live the kind of life that God requires of you. Because God is holy. 
That's why when Peter was praying, uh, Paul rather, was praying for the Thessalonians in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 23, he prayed that God will sanctify you wholly. Sanctify you wholly. Give you the ability completely, body, soul, and spirit, never to annoy God again. That's why I'm praying for every one of you who are already saved and are not yet sanctified. Cry for sanctification. And in case you didn't hear me during the convention, when I was speaking on the power of sanctification, go and get the tape. Listen to it. Sanctification is beautiful. It makes you a favorite of God. Oh, everybody can call God Father. Only the sanctified can call God Daddy. And there's a lot of difference. Because I remember when I started calling God Daddy, some of my colleagues told me, what kind of pride is that? God is the father of everybody. I say, I agree. He's the father of everybody, but he's my daddy. My daddy. Daddy means special. Daddy is what to call someone who is, I mean, there's an intimacy between the two of you. In uh, modern language, you call him Popsy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you, I'm sure you get that one. God is my Popsy. <laughs> we are so close. He tells me certain things. That I'm not a prophet, but once in a while he will tell me, son, this is coming. At times he will ask me to tell you, at times he will say, keep, just keep your mouth shut because it should be between you and us. Or you will give me a way that I will say it so that uh, people will not come and arrest me. Thank you. When he said the whole world will have a holiday, that was the best way you could explain that coronavirus is on the way. And when the thing broke, everybody had holiday, everybody, whether white or black. And, and <laughs> some of you say, okay, what is he telling you now? Eh, he's telling you it's going to be all right with you. <laughs> Certification is beautiful. It's on a higher level than salvation. And then after you have been sanctified, there's a higher level. And that's the level of power. Baptism in the Holy Spirit. Acts of the Apostle chapter 1 verse 8. Acts 1 verse 8. He said you shall receive power. And you say better. How come then that all these people who pray in tongues, how come that they don't have power? Do you know the kind of tongues they are speaking? Some tongues are not given by God. Mm -hmm. All you need to do is listen carefully. And you'll find that the fellow who says speaking in tongues is repeating the same thing two, three times. Achaka, chaka, kachaka. Achaka, chaka. When you are speaking, even if you are speaking in Yoruba, it's not only Ekwelembeu, Ekwelembeu. If you go to America, where they don't understand Yoruba, and you say Ekwelembeu, 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 they say you are speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. There are some tongues that are copying. 
there are some tongues that come from the Holy Spirit. So today, um, if you have been speaking in tongues and you don't see the evidence of power, when it is time to pray, pray for the baptism in the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit is the one who gives you the tongues, he will back it with power. I'm not the one who says so. But then, even among those who have power, there are levels. Because we are talking about greater heights. And I want you to leave this place today completely different. My cry to God is that every one of us, after last convention, we will be completely different. I have said it before, power or heat, to use the example that is easy to understand, because there's a link between power and heat. Um, the, mot the motorcycle is more powerful than the bicycle. Why? Because there's something called an engine that produces heat. And it is through the production of that heat that the motorcycle moves. Uh, you don't believe me, go to the airport and see a plane that is about to take off. You will see some heat being generated. Anyway. Suppose you, are, you have power and you want that power to become uh, useful in a particular direction. Heat can be transmitted three basic ways by conduction. What conduction means I have heat I want to transfer part of that heat to you, so I come and lay hands on you. That's by conduction. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, from verse 1 to 8. Acts 3, 1 to 8. When Peter was just beginning to appreciate uh, the power that he received on the day of Pentecost, he saw a lame man and said to him, In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. The man didn't move until he held him by the hand. Then the power flowed by conduction, and the ankle bone received strength, and the man jumped up, began to walk. When you receive power and you want to begin to manifest that power, initially you lay hands on the sick and they recover. But there is uh, another way of doing it when you grow. And that is what we will call in science transfer of heat by convection. I have heat. I put that heat into something. That something takes the heat to where it is needed. Uh, I take an handkerchief. I pray over it. I soak it with anointing. I send it to someone far away. A fellow comes in contact with that handkerchief, the power transfer through the handkerchief to that fellow. That is transfer of anointing by convection. 
You will get to that level. Yeah. Acts chapter 11, verse 11 to 12. Acts 11, from verse 11 to 12. The Bible says God performed special miracles by the hand of Paul. So that from his body, aprons, handkerchiefs were taken to the sea and they were all healed. But there is still a level higher than that one. That this time you don't have to send handkerchief or send aprons. Just what we call in science transfer of heat by radiation. Acts of the Apostles chapter 5. Read it from verse 14 to 16. Acts 5 from verse 14 to 16. It tells us that the shadow of Peter kept on healing the sick. In other words, when people heard that Peter was coming to town, if he's coming in the morning, they know where the sun will rise and they will go and lie the sick on the other side of the road so that his shadow can fall upon them. He is not leaving them with an handkerchief. He is not touching them. But by radiation, those people got the anointing needed for their healing and deliverance. I wasn't planning to tell you stories this morning because I want you to soak this thing, everything. I want you to be able to repeat this summer. This is a new year. This will be my new year gift to you. But some of you will remember a time, several years ago, when we were having a Holy Ghost service at the very first auditorium. And all of a sudden, God spoke to me and said there were some people there who had severe backache. So severe that for a long time they have never been able to touch their toes. And he said, call them out. I want to heal them. I was happy. I called them out and they came. I thought he was going to ask me to lay hands on them. But no, he said, dance around them. Uh, I was a bit confused. How can I dance around sick people? What will I say I'm dancing about? I'm rejoicing your back is aching. But I know who spoke. So I told the boys to begin to beat their drums. And I danced around those people. And I felt very foolish doing it. But after I've been dancing for a while, I said, that's enough. Tell them to go ahead and touch their hole, to touch their toes. And they were all healed. That's healing by radiation. By the grace of God, he has moved us into operating more and more via radiation. That's why you find that on many occasions during any special program, we will ask you to lift up your handkerchief or something and we we'll wave our hand. And some of you will think we are joking. Some of you know we are not joking. <laughs> At least we had the testimony of somebody during the convention who was involved in a fire accident. His body was burnt, but the dress he wore was not touched by fire. Because on one occasion, he had worn that dress and we had waved our hands to say every dress on that day had become specially anointed. The anointing is so powerful, fire cannot even destroy it. Uh, today, wherever you may be watching, 
I wave my hand towards you and I decree be anointed. But there's yet a level higher than that. That's the level where In science, if you want to call it, use that one. It's when power is transferred by a spark. You know, they tell you when you are in a petrol station, don't smoke yell. Why? Because the fume of the petrol may reach out and catch the fire of your cigarette transfer by spark you can get this power transferred just as the preacher is speaking he said he sent his word and the word Heal them. In other words, God sits down in heaven. He didn't send an handkerchief. He didn't come round for radiation. He sent his word. And the word will heal them and deliver them from their destructions. And you are very familiar with that. Because from time to time you have heard the testimony that God will just suddenly stop me preaching and say there is someone here and this, 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 this. And when you hear it, many of you will say, what's he talking about? It means nothing to you because you are not the one he's talking to. Until the fellow comes to testify, then you say, yes, I remember when he said that. I still remember one of the testimonies that gave me tremendous joy. I think the testimony was given in July of a woman who went to the doctors for one special procedure. And they told her, how old are you? She said, 58, he said, you are too old. We can only do this thing for someone who is 55, maximum. And she came to the Holy Ghost service, and as she was coming, God spoke and said, there is someone here. I'm reducing your age by five years. I'm sure you had the testimony. Uh, and uh, I mean, when some people talk of fake miracles, how can you fake that? This fellow was just coming. We've, I've never met her. She has not told me what the doctor said. And she told her husband, you hear that? Now, my age, instead of being 58, is 53. Let's go back to the doctor. They went back to the doctor. She told the doctor, now I'm 53. The doctor looked at her and said, what kind of joke is this? <laughs> Last week you were 58, and, but now I'm 53. Just go ahead and do your procedure. And the, the result of the procedure we all saw, I don't know what it is that you need to make this new year the best year of your life. But may I say to you today, receive it in Jesus' name. Of course, the, there is a height higher than all this one we are talking about. And that is heaven. Because you can perform miracles on earth. You can heal the sick. You can raise the dead. You can speak a word and miracles can happen. 
And then you can get to heaven and Jesus Christ will say, I don't even know you. I call you a worker of iniquity. Because you can pretend on earth. You can call yourself a prophet. You can call yourself supreme apostle. But God knows those who are his own. You can't deceive God. That's why the text will say, those who wait upon the Lord, those who are connected to the Lord, they are the ones who will keep on flying and never get tired. Because if you are connected to the source of electricity, you won't run out of power. When you are truly connected to God, the sky is not your limit. You keep on soaring. That's why I'm appealing this morning. You want greater heights? You want to be much higher than where you are now? Get connected to Jesus. I'm not talking of just coming to church. I'm talking of you be hungry for him. There are some of us, we can't wait for the door of the church to be opened. We want to be close to our maker. And so those of you who have not even had contact with him, you have not surrendered your life to him. I beg you today, come and surrender your life to him. Let him give you a brand new beginning. Come out of the hole. Let God put your feet on solid rock. Let your journey to the top begin today. Come and give your life to Jesus. I will count from one to seven before I say something.